electro calisthenics. Christ is in our midst today on Monday, November 20th. We commemorate the fourth feast of the presentation of the Theotokos into the temple. St. Gregory the Righteous of Decapolis and St. Proclus, Archbishop of Constantinople. The fourth feast of the presentation of the Theotokos into the temple. By blossoming forth the only ever virgin as fruit, today Holy Anna does betroth us all unto joy. Instead of our former grief, on this day she does fulfill her vows to the Most High, leading her with joy into the Lord's holy temple, who truly is the temple and pure mother of God the Word. The whole world is filled today with joy and gladness on the Theotokos' auspicious and resplendent feast, whereon with great voice it cries out, The heavenly tabernacle is she in truth. Regarding St. Proclus, Archbishop of Constantinople, St. Proclus lived during the reign of St. Theodosius the Younger, a disciple and scribe of St. John Chrysostom. He was ordained bishop of Cyzicus about the year 426. But because the people there unlawfully elected another bishop before his arrival, he remained in Constantinople. In 429, Nestorius, who had been archbishop of Constantinople for about a year, and had already begun his blasphemous teaching that it is wrong to call the Holy Virgin Theotokos, invited Bishop Proclus to give a sermon on one of the feasts of Our Lady, which he did, openly defending in Nestorius' presence the name Theotokos, that is, Mother of God. St. Proclus was elevated to the throne of Archbishop of Constantinople in 434. It was he who persuaded Emperor Theodosius the Younger and his holy sister Pulcheria to have the most sacred relics of his godly teacher, St. John Chrysostom, brought back from Comana and triumphantly received them upon the return to the imperial city. He reposed in peace in the year 447. O God of our fathers, ever dealing with us according to your gentleness, take not your mercy from us, but by their entreaties guide our life in peace. Regarding St. Gregory the Righteous of Decapolis, St. Gregory, who was from Irenopolis of the Decapolis of Asia Minor, was the son of Sergius and Mary, he became a monk as a young man, and after struggling for many years in virtue and prayer under obedience to a wise spiritual father, he was informed by revelation that it was the will of God for him to live, like the patriarch Abraham, with no certain dwelling, moving from place to place. His journeys took him to Ephesus, Constantinople, Corinth, Rome, Sicily, Thessalonica, and again to Constantinople, where after many labors in defense of orthodoxy against iconoclasm, he reposed in peace in the first half of the ninth century. He had two disciples, one of whom was St. Joseph the hymnographer, who wrote the Menaean service for St. Gregory, his father in Christ. From St. Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, meaning that they are all three taking ownership of this letter. To the church of the Thessalonians in God, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, as is fitting, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore we ourselves boast of you in the churches of God for your steadfastness, faith in all your persecutions, and in the afflictions which you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be made worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are suffering. Since indeed God deems it just to repay with afflictions those who afflict you, and to grant rest with us to you who are afflicted. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven, with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance upon those who do not know God, and upon those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, all this suffering that the Thessalonians are enduring, God will bring vengeance for them, so they must suffer in grace. They shall suffer the punishment of eternal destruction and exclusion from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, when he comes on the day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at in whom all believed. But on the day of judgment, those that have hurt the church, they will receive judgment. God will have his vengeance. It is not for us to seek that vengeance. The Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, when Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, he answered them, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, Lo, here it is, or there. For behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. Many people look for signs. Many people listen to the saints, such as St. Paisios or others, and try to extrapolate, oh, when is there going to be the end times? When is the kingdom of God coming? And Jesus Christ is telling us 
The kingdom of God is present in the midst of you, as Christ is in the midst of you. We look for signs, but these signs are not what we're looking for for the end times. And he said to the disciples, Days are coming when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Lo there, or lo here. Do not go. Do not follow them. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in this day, in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. In other words, when Christ comes in his judgment, when he comes in the second coming, it will not be ambiguous. It will not be something that is similar to what he came in the first time where he came as a child. When he comes to judge, that's it. He will come in the same glory that he ascended, the whole army of angels, and then he will judge the world. So it is not something that is going to be ambiguous. However, we should not be looking for those signs. One of the reasons why this is also true is because at any given time, according to tradition, there are between three and seven holy people praying that the judgment of God be kept at bay, give more people time to repent. We have been in the end times since ascension. After Christ ascended in glory, we have been in the end times, meaning that the end times, the final end, could happen in the next five minutes, it could happen in the next 5,000 years. We must prepare ourselves and our souls every day and every moment for that moment when Christ comes. I hope that you've enjoyed today's spiritual calisthenics. Have a blessed and wonderful day.